Uh, Ven Gonza, strolling through the stretch, reports home about four in front. Saburo's girl was second. Running time, 110.81 seconds. How be it to the outside? They're in the gate. And they're off in the San Carlos Stakes presented by FanDuel. And Spirit of McKenna is very quick, but here's Forbidden Kingdom. And Forbidden Kingdom is up to take the lead away and does so very easily, opening up almost two. Spirit of McKenna now second, and on the inside is holding the loot, a clear-cut third. Howbeit is fourth as they head past the 5-8th pole. He's four lengths off the pacemaker, Clem Labine, and get her number at the back of the field. Juan Hernandez and Forbidden Kingdom going past the half-mile pole with a two-length advantage. Spirit of McKenna joined at the rail by holding the loot. A gap of four. How be it is asked to pick it up. Has eight to make up at this stage. Now get her number is underway in the pink silks. And down at the rail, Clem Lamont. They're coming to the quarter pole. And it's Forbidden Kingdom. Cruising to the quarter pole with a length advantage. Spirit of McKenna trying to cut into the margin second. Get her number continues to make headway. Just got a reminder on the outside as Spirit of McKenna has run by Forbidden Kingdom with a furlong left to go. Handridden opens up two. Get her number in the center of the track. It's Spirit of McKenna in a powerful effort. Spirit of McKenna has won the San Carlos Stakes presented by FanDuel. Forbidden Kingdom second photo between get her number and how be it who was finishing well. And Carlos trophy. I don't get it a little fidgety. We're set. Yellow brick still acting up. And they're off. Excel calculator. Mid-pack, the early lead belongs to Castle Island. Dazzle Me Silver comes away in second. Big Hat Willie is in third. I don't get it fourth in the early going. Then it's Yellow Brick racing on the inside of Riverboat Richie. And Excel Calculator is eight lengths off the pace. They're heading to the six furlong pole behind Castle Island. Castle Island dictating terms. Dazzle Me Silver is in second. Big Hat Willie third. I don't get it. Well spotted fourth. And he's about three lengths off the lead with six furlongs to run. Yellow Brick is next. Racing on the inside of Riverboat Richie and Excel Calculator is about eight lengths off the battle up top between Castle Island and Dazzle Me Silver. They're one, two, heading to the half mile pole. Now, I don't get it. Inching up willingly in third. Big Hat Willie is retreating. Yellow Brick between horses. River Richie outside of that pair is six lengths off the lead. And Excel Calculator continues to trail. Castle Island and Juan Hernandez take them into the far turn, hounded by Dazzle Me Silver the whole way. At the rail, Yellow Brick is getting closer, right with his rival, I don't get it, who's clearly into third. From the back of the field, Excel Calculator has surfaced. He's only four off them, he'll be caught wide. Riverboat Richie is dropping out of it, and Big Hat Willie is the trailer. There are several chances, I don't get it, with a three wide bid, and Yellow Brick cuts the corner and comes through. Yellow Brick puts his head in front. I don't get it on the outside. Dazzle Me Silver in between them, and Castle Island, they're in the final furlong. I don't get it, handwritten to Yellow Brick. Yellow Brick, I don't get it, I don't get it. Takes the lead in the final stages. I don't get it. Takes care of business. Scores by three quarters of a length. Yellow Brick was second, Dazzle Me Silver third, Excel Calculator, and then Castle Island.
They're in the gate. And they're off. Vortex is hustled out and immediately crosses over to take the lead, joined by Russell's Hustle, who's prominent, and Telos to their outside in third. Tap it down fourth in the early going. Bluegrass Rider is down at the rail, right next to Ice Storm. Glendale, and keen to go, has to go five wide, understandably, into the first turn. It is Vortex and Russell's Hustle dueling on the front end. Right on the leader's heels is Bluegrass Rider down at the rail. Then comes Ice Storm, racing in between horses, and Telos in the blue colors moves up to take third. Tap it down, keen to go, continues widest of all. Glendale in hand at the back of a very compact field. Less than four lengths covers them as Russell's Hustle has now emerged as a clear-cut leader at the 5-8th pole. Leading by a length and a half over Vortex and Telos right together, second and third. Ice Storm is in between those two. Tap it down, keen to go, making early bids on the outside. And another two back to Glendale. There's a half mile left to run. Russell's Hustle and Flavian Pratt to catch. Three parts of a length to Telos in second. Now it's a length and a half as Russell's Hustle in hand around the far turn. Telos moves to engage him in second. Keen to go, still in the thick of it despite the long bit of real estate he's covered. And on the outside, here's Keen to go with the yellow cap between horses, Telos. And down at the rail, Russell's Hustle, three of them vying with Bluegrass Rider in to four, top of the stretch. And Telos has another gear. Opens up a length and a half now with a furlong left to go. Keen to go, trying hard to get by second. As Russell's Hustle is back to third, then Ice Storm and Bluegrass Rider, a 16th out. It's Telos, keen to go. Telos just in front. And Telos, under Jose Valdivia Jr., beats keen to go. Russell's Hustle third, photo fourth between Ice Storm and Bluegrass Rider. The grade one Beholder Mile is next. Post time in 23 minutes. Year old female champion and Calbred Horse of the Year takes up her spot on the outside. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Beholder Mile. Awake at midnight, bounces out quickly. Ganadora with that sprint speed up to take the lead. And Fun to Dream is well placed in the early going. A close up third into the first turn. So it's Ganadora in front. Now taking second is Fun to Dream. And down at the rail, Midnight Memories comes away in third. Amore is fourth. Awake at midnight, now fifth. Pauline's Pearl right next to her. Desert Dawn three wide, six lengths off the lead. And Kirsten Bosch is at the back of the field. It's Ganadora to the back stretch, leading the way. Has it by three quarters of a length to Fun to Dream in second. They're followed by Amore in the clear. Green cap third. Awake at midnight is eager between horses, but currently in traffic. Midnight Memories is down at the rail. Pauline's Pearl racing on the inside of Desert Dawn. Only four lengths covers that entire group, and Kirsten Bosch at the back. Fun to dream alongside Ganadora into the far turn. Just under a length back is Amore in third. Then Awake at Midnight taking fourth. Desert Dawn on the outside fifth, just three off the lead as Fun to Dream has taken the lead midway on the far turn. And it's Fun to Dream in front coming to the quarter pole. Amore a length back second. On the far outside, Desert Dawn is in third. Pauline's Pearl still six lengths off the lead. Top of the stretch and Fun to Dream in front has a two length cushion on Amore in second who's trying her best to close the gap. They're in Side, the final eighth of a mile, Fun to Dream, Amore within a half length. Amore is trying to get to Fun to Dream. Fun to Dream digging in, Amore surging. These two come to the wire together. Amore got up in the last jump to beat Fun to Dream. Midnight Memories was next, followed by Desert Dawn. And on the outside, up for fifth, was Kirsten Bosch in the Beholder Mile very well in the mornings including a couple of 47 and change work so again i feel like she's going to be able to handle this grade one beholder mile explosion they're in the gate and they're off 
Implosion is going straight to the front with nice natural speed and very scary along the inside matches strides. They pass the stands together as one. Pop Pop Stream is in third and Barrister's Ride is at the back of the field. Into the first turn, Kent Desarmo protects the rail with Very Scary on the inside of Implosion. And it will be Very Scary going to the six furlong pole with the lead. Implosion keeps her company, and they have pulled five clear of Pop Pop Stream, who settles in third, two in front of Barrister's Ride. They have five and a half furlongs to run. It's Very Scary at the rail, Implosion a neck back second. Still four to Pop Pop Stream, a length and a half to Barrister's Ride. Down the back stretch, Very Scary. Implosion and Flavian Pratt still right there with her, being worked just a touch, though, to keep pace with Very Scary who's breezing along toward the 3 8 pole, leading by about a half a length. Implosion second. Barrister's Ride inches up a joint third. Inside Pop Pop Stream. Very Scary is in front. Now opens it up to a length and a half. And Very Scary trying to win it right now. Has a two-length lead. Implosion fully extended. Not going with her. Pop Pop Stream. And Barrister's Ride, they're a quarter of a mile from home, and Very Scary has built up a five-length cushion. Barrister's Ride cuts the corner, moves into second with Pop Pop Stream and Implosion. Very Scary by eight, by nine, by double digits coming to the 16th pole. Completely overwhelming the field. Very Scary and Kent DeSormo win by a block. Pop Pop Stream second. Then it was Barrister's Ride and Implosion.
Out here in La La Land tonight, it's the Oscar ceremonies. And you know what? In the horse racing community, if there was an Academy Award for the best Hispanic ambassador in a supporting role anywhere at a racetrack in North America, our seminar guest today would be my nominee. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Quigley, VIP player concierge. Also, your seminar host for the next 40 minutes. Happy Sunday, everybody. And the good news is we are on the turf. The turf course is listed as good. All races remain on the turf today, and you can see the main track is listed as fast. Without further ado, let's welcome in that potential Academy Award winner. His name, <laughs> George Artuzar. George, happy Sunday. Welcome to the seminar. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and an honor always to be with you here <laughs> at TQ on the show. And uh, you know, we're in this business that we absolutely love. I adore you as well. And uh, it's great to be here. And, and I'm glad we got uh, turf racing today. In case you haven't seen George on the seminar before, he brings a lot of energy. So <laughs> our expectations are high. I can see you're representing the company colors. You got the Santa Anita Park hat on. Santa Anita is a special place to all of us, but particularly to you. I Especially to me, I love this hat. It's a great giveaway, and uh, you know, if uh, I've been wearing it since I got it, I wore it every day, every single day. And another great giveaway Saturday, we're going to have a print of all the Jockey Colony, and they're really going to be cool. signing it Saturday. Really cool. You don't want to miss that. That is really going to be a fantastic giveaway. We got some great items here, and uh, I love the great race place. There's a lot of people, though, that mean a lot to you here, and you yeah. kind of want to acknowledge them in terms of not only maybe advancing your career, but just their friendship as well. Yeah, you know, I've been very fortunate. My my first job ever was at Hialeah Park in its heyday. That was special working at Hialeah. I got a chance to work at uh, Hollywood Park, uh, and it's you know as it went into off to the sunset. And now I work at the Great Race Place. It's and, and it's just. It's just fantastic. And the reason that it's the great race place, in my view, is the people here. The people, I think, is what make it great. Horses are great all over the country. But here at the great race place, we're surrounded with some stellar individuals. One, for instance, is Amy Zimmerman just got nominated. She's going to be on the board of Karma. Correct. With Jay Pridman, the recently retired Jay Pridman. Jay Pridman. What? I I don't know Jay that strong, but uh, Amy, you you sit right next to me. Yeah. She is... You talk about a person who loves horses. This is an ideal spot for her. I she think had, Amy lives here, doesn't she? I mean, she, seven days a week. She's here seven days. Every time you show up, I mean, she's in the office. And we're so lucky to have her. She's got more, like, Emmys than uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus. <laughs> I mean, she's got, like, 87 Emmys. She's got Emmys in horse racing, Emmys on network TV, Emmys in the Olympics. She could do, like, an Emmy award-winning uh, show on Curlin. Uh, the horse, and then turn around and do an Emmy uh, award-winning show on curling. You know, I mean, she's, I mean, she's just, we're so lucky to have her here. Uh, Amy is, uh, so I, I wish her the best of luck at Karma, who obviously they do a great job. So uh, best wishes to her and just everybody who works here. Um, you know, Frank Miramati, you, you may not know, I, I met Frank in Hialeah, uh, like when he was, was like he 12. Was he working or was he playing? No, he was, he was working, but okay, uh, just he's checking. just been around forever. And there was a stretch there where I didn't, uh, where I, I, you know, Hollywood Park closed and I didn't have a job. And there was a couple of months I couldn't pay the rent. You know who helped me pay the rent? Frank Miramati. I mean, gosh, I love that guy. And we're lucky <laughs> to have him here. We're lucky to have him. It's just a stellar uh, racetrack announcer, caller, and the guy, one of the guys who's been the nicest to me ever is Nate Newby. And he's, to me, is the... Are you is, looking for a promotion I'm or not, something here, George? Uh, I'm okay, good, no. Nate Newby was just, uh, you know, when I grew up in New York City, and Howie Zucker, also a New Yorker, so one of the reasons, uh, he was a great... Uh, Big he was a fan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I loved uh, Howie Zucker. But uh, there was a word, uh, mensch. And to me, Nate Newby's a mensch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's just not, he's just wonderful. He's just a great guy. And uh, he's the antithesis. You say, nice guys finish last. He's a nice guy. He's, uh, you know, empathizes with horse players because he's a horse player, empathizes with trainers. He's been with trainer owners. I mean, he's just, we're lucky to have him as well. And even my boss, uh, you know, he's got a, my, Anthony uh, uh, Arthur. Uh, and, and Andrew uh, Arthur. Andrew Arthur. Uh, double A. It's easier to just double call him a. double A. He, if he has a Tomlinson number, like, uh, you know how they have a grass, his Tomlinson number for race tracker is like 494. You know, he's got, he's impeccably bred. It's just, uh, and you who just love horse racing, I followed you <laughs> since Horse Player Magazine, and now you're in charge of all of our, our most important uh, customers, and you really care so much about this sport. Just, 
there's so many people that make this the great race place and it's really i'm so proud to be part of it well we're proud to have you as well george but we're blessed to be here let's face it right i mean we would be here anyway as a patron yeah, we're yeah. actually getting paid to come to the racetrack but we want to uphold the integrity and the reputation of the racetrack and of course it's of labor of love you talked about how frank miramati helped you pay the rent there's an old saying around the racetrack pay the rent with kent and kent disormo the jockey certainly Ooh. has had a resurrection he won the big cap of boards to leno boy had a couple wins yesterday as well it's great to see Kent Desarmo back on back on the proper beam. Just fantastic. And, you know, people uh, see him, they go, man, he's riding better than ever. And he is. He's riding fantastic Hall of Fame. But when you see him in person, just his whole aura about him. Uh, you it's know, there's positive. A horse, it's yeah, positive. It's so positive. Phosphorescent is in the first race. That's he is shining right now. He's just uh, I am so happy for him. I, uh, he's easy to, to root for, easy to love. And uh, I, I certainly wish him the best of luck uh, moving forward. He's, uh, he's just looked phenomenal. Back in the day, George, when you were working and playing at Hialeah, you were involved in a lot of the Latin TV productions. Yes. Did you ever win any sort of an Academy Award for either television or <laughs> Univision or Telemundo? No, no, I never, you know. I, I, you I should have. I, yeah, I think I won one award for a children's show, uh, for for the best children's show at, at Univision. Uh -huh. It was the only children's show at Univision, <laughs> but I'll take it. I, 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 I still, I'll take it. <laughs> what are some of your responsibilities as the Hispanic ambassador? What do you do specifically to try and track that important audience, both on track and also off track in terms of wagering? Well, uh, one of the, I think the important things is uh, in the program, you know, I write Santa Anita Oi in English and Spanish, and I've gotten a lot of uh, people from all over the country and all over the world, Venezuela, Colombia, saying that they read it and, and you know, and it helps them understand. So, uh, you know, keeping those in, uh, those people involved, I, you know, work with Univision, Telemundo, uh, Que Buena, some of the local radio stations and TV stations to make sure we're still, we're still top of mind when we have special events here and uh you know i do all the translating obviously for the website and so forth so uh you know and, and i'm an excellent handicapper yesterday that's i picked out venganza that's why you're on the show i picked venganza out just like that 50 See that? 50 shot right man i'm good <laughs> George is very good. And we're going to find out if he likes any other one to nine shots on today's nine race card. But before we do any of that, let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Miramani and get the early changes on today's Sunday's card here at the Great Race Place. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park, the great race place. The track is fast, and the turf course rated as good. The rail on the turf is at zero feet for today's action. Here are the early changes. In the first, we have some blinker notes. It's the start of the early pick five. We have a blinker note in race two. In the third race, the starter series, leg one, we have no changes. Fourth race starts the rainbow six, scratch one, Mitiko. $54,000 plus in the jackpot for the pick six. Race five, scratch number seven, Zaffarelli. In the fifth, scratch seven, Zaffarelli. Late pick five starts with the fifth. The sixth race on today's card has no changes. The seventh is the grade three Santa Ana stakes. Scratch number six, my favorite daughter. And scratch number eight, Harper's Gallop. Six and eight out of the seventh, the Santa Ana. Eighth race begins the golden hour, pick four. No changes. And in the ninth, the program scratch of number nine. Finally here, the golden hour double begins with race nine. As is the case every Saturday and Sunday, we do have the Coast to Coast Pick 5, which combines races from Gulfstream Park and Santa Anita Park with a player-friendly 15% takeout. It starts today with Gulfstream's 8th, 407 Eastern, 107 Pacific for the start of the Coast to Coast Pick 5, 
a dollar minimum wager and a low 15% takeout. Let's go back to the seminar with Tom Quigley at Quigley's Corner today in the studio. His special guest is George O. George Ortuzar. Welcome back. We're talking horses with George Ortuzar. He's the Hispanic ambassador here at the Great Race Place. And if you've ever been blessed in dealing with George from a customer service standpoint, either at Hialeah or Hollywood Park or here at Sanita, you know that he certainly cares about our patrons and he values your patronage as, as we all do here. And we welcome and encourage all of you to come out. We've got spectacular accommodations, right? No matter what the level of player is, the box seat area is great. Clocker's Corner is great. The suites are great. I mean, we've been harping a lot about what a great race place the great race place is, but those accommodations are really what make it so special. Yeah, and and we really go out, out of our way to make sure that our employees know that the customer is the most important thing. And we really try to uh, to make it as accommodating as possible, trying to uh, make sure they have a great time. I don't know how many people have come here for the first time and you know, either I was in charge of making sure they had a great day or a plethora of employees that we have that we stress. And they usually go, I, you know, I had no idea how wonderful it is. What a great, it's really a great day. You spend it, you have fun, there's great food, there's great drinking, usually entertainment, of course, world-class racing, uh, a, a day at the track. A lot of people just don't know it. When they get here, they realize it. And I think that's getting giving us a, a younger and younger and more exciting crowd. Uh, I think the future is, is pretty bright. And here at the Great Race Place, we want to make sure you have a great time. It's interesting you bringing that up, George, because yesterday there were some young executives from the National Football League, the NFL, who are based here in Southern California. And one of the four people from the NFL uh, out here at the Great Race Place yesterday had been to the track. The other three had not. The other three fell in love with the place. They want to come back. They're talking about business partnerships. I mean, it's just intoxicating, right? It wasn't even really a pretty day. We had the cloud cover covering up the mountains. We were off the turf. But when, inevitably, as ambassadors, when we bring new people to the racetrack, it's hard not to fall in love with a 300-acre property basically in the middle of Los Angeles. No, it's it's beautiful. And you and me and many people I know, you know, it's not a it's not fake. I genuinely care about these customers and I know you do as well. Of course. And I want them to have a great time and 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 uh and hopefully some of them the, have become friends. I know some yeah. of the players have become your friends and likewise with me. For sure. And the energy you got, I don't know if you saw that guy that really uh, uh, the uh, larger gentleman who was cheering at the NHC who was like, throw a stick over the fence. Did you see that guy? <laughs> was he That's from New York? Made it. Yo, it was great. You know, it's just uh, there's so much excitement. It's, so, uh, it's just a wonderful atmosphere at the racetrack and relatively inexpensive. I mean, you, I've been to some events where parking is $30, $40. Getting in is $350. I mean, you spent like a nickel before you even you know start seeing the show. Here, the show, free parking on uh, Friday's free admission. Uh, it, it's just a, a wonderful time uh, and relatively inexpensive. And the way the, the jockeys walk back and forth to the track, as well as the trainers, you can rub shoulders yes. with Hall of Fame athletes and talk to them in between races. And, of course, they're part of the ambassadorship as well. They're so nice. You, you don't want to miss the signing Saturday because we got a wonderful group, a colony of jockeys, because they you, they do stop. When they go through that tunnel, they stop. They sign autographs. They say hello to kids, give them goggles. I mean, our jockeys. These are wonderful. Now, I'm Irish, you're not, but you haven't talked about the St. Patrick's Day promotion either as well. I'm going to be dressed as a leprechaun. <laughs> so I, don't, you know, I got my tie on today, but uh, I'll be yeah, lucky the Irish. I got all my jokes ready. You know, why, why can't you, don't you iron uh, four-leaf clover? Because you don't want to press your luck. You know, things like that. So I got, you know, I'm ready for uh, St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be a big promotion. The, uh, a, lot <laughs> the, of gold. a lot of gold. Uh, you can win uh, big money uh, with the giveaway. You want to get involved with that. We got a lot of great promotions. Go to sandanita.com. Uh, and, and you're going to see, we're, we're always here to try to make sure you have a great time. We're going to try and win some big money today, George. We're not going to wait for St. Patrick's Day. So let's take a look at race number one, which begins the 50 cent early pick five. As I mentioned, all races remain on the turf course. The rails today are at zero feet. And this first race is for maiden special weight three year olds. We've got a field of nine, number two, Maltese Falcon, and number eight, Stonks, are both first time geldings. The original morning line favorite was on the rail. But currently, the betting choice at even money from a four to one morning line is the aforementioned number two, Maltese Falcon, ridden by Frankie DeTore. Give us your thoughts on race one, Georgie. Yeah, I think uh, certainly first time Gelding's got uh, you know improving uh, thoroughgraph numbers. 
uh, he's he's one to be. But I am going to go with the morning line favorite, Phosphorescence. I think Phosphorescence has got uh, a pace advantage in this race. Uh, showed some good early speed going down the hill. And uh, you no, know, now going six and a half furlongs and six furlongs. And now they take the blinkers off, get them to relax. I heard uh, him talk about him today in the morning radio show. Who's he? Uh, Mike Michael McCarthy, McCarthy? Okay. was on the uh, with Mike uh, Willman and talking about it. So uh, he likes his chances. I like his chances. He gets the Hall of Famer, Johnny V. Uh, I think Phosphorescence has every right to take this field wire to wire. And, man, I bet on uh, Siguatanejo so last time I. out. I'm just got nailed. It was so. It was like one we of those. We still have nightmares. That was oh, such a brutal beat. Wasn't brutal it? beat. It was ten to one. It was. It was going to make so much money that day. And because uh, Yoshi Kamura rode a fantastic race. He has been riding fantastic as well. Duve Day later on today, he rode that one fantastically. Uh, I, I, good for him. Uh, pocket, you know, KK Pocket Kings, I call him, because uh, he <laughs> he does a great job. Hopefully, uh, uh, this one's going to run well as well. I like that one, and I like Maltese Falcon. Obviously, for the ultimate equipment change, uh, should help uh, that one. And uh, I'm a big Humphrey Bogart fan, so I uh, love the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> so, uh, but I think phosphorescence is going to shine. You should uh, remember that uh, little acronym that you just mentioned about Pocket Kings. Your boss's uh, initials are double A. Just refer aces. to him as Pocket Aces. Race Pocket number aces. two begins the 50 cent <laughs> early pick four. This race is on the main track, one mile of the distance. Main claiming three year old Phillies in for a $30,000 tag. We've got a field of six. Number one, No B is the, is the uh, two to one morning line favorite, written by the aforementioned Kent Desorma. We're going to see Kent in the winner's circle after race two. I hope so, because here's another one. That is going to show some speed. Uh, I love, uh, you know, two sprints and then stretching out. I think that's a, a formula for success in in uh, uh, many cases. And I think that's what's going to happen here. Kent DeSormer knows this one well. Mike Pipey uh, certainly knows how to win races. He's going to save all that ground in that first turn. On uh, third graph numbers, they're all relatively even. It's a short field. But I think that uh, Noby is going to be the one to beat. Jacqueline Cochran is getting first time Pratt, which is a very profitable angle over the last few years. And this one's got a really good workout report with uh, Harrington, and I respect him immensely. He, his report, uh, I love it. And uh, Jacqueline Cochran got a really good workout report. Miati, the master trains, first time Pratt. Uh, certainly uh, Jackie, Jacqueline Cochran, I think, has a chance as well. So those two, in a short field, maybe I might use one, maybe two. One four in race number two, uh, Georgia's second selection, number four, Jacqueline Cochran, is a full to Johnny Padres. You will call Johnny Padres, was also trained by uh, Steve Miotti, owned yeah. by Nick Alexander, has earned up to $283,000 in uh, her career. Race number three, it's for Phillies and Mares. It's a really good starter allowance race, spreading five furlongs in the turf course. The starter allowance condition is for Phillies and Mares who have started for a claiming price of $25,000 or less since January 1st, 2021. That's a long time period for these Phillies and Mares to become eligible for this race. And number six, Angel Sense is a three-to-one morning line favorite. Kyle Frey with a very live uh, live morning line favorite here. Thumbs up or thumbs down on the favorite, George? Well, I like the trainer the, uh, of, of uh, Angel the Sense. Love that guy. He's so nice. Such a nice man, uh, Libra uh, Barrosio. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm going to go with uh, a bit of a long shot in this race. Uh, Baby Kristen, number seven. Baby Kristen uh, is getting uh, Ricky Gonzalez, and, and Ricky really, does really good with, with uh, front runners. And this one showed true grit last time out, uh, winning a race over there at uh, Turf Paradise. Renee Amesqua, oh, man, I, you know, when I was a jockey agent, like in the, uh, in the fair circuit, I, I wrote a lot for Renee Amesqua. He's just a wonderful guy. He's got my same hairstyle. I like that guy a lot, uh, Renee. <laughs> And, uh, and I think baby Christian's got every right in a race that's, you know, there's some speed uh, assigned there, but he's got some strong numbers. You know, he's not very consistent. Sometimes he'll throw in a good one. Sometimes he'll throw in a bad one. I'm hoping uh, this one's going to go wire to wire. Baby Christian at six to one is going to be my top pick in the race. If a speed duel does develop, I, I've seen bowl of cherries uh, close uh, ground on occasion and, and make up a lot of ground and equally good on the dirt or the grass. So, uh, I think Bull the Cherry's got a, a chance as well. So uh, a couple of non-favorites in, in race three I'm going to be keying on 
But uh, pretty much you can make a case for many of these. George, you mentioned that uh, trainer Rene Amesca has the same hairstyle as you. You're wearing the San Anita baseball cap, so we can't see what your hairstyle oh, is. Oh, my hairstyle. Hairstyle. Okay, hey, There we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify that. Uh, before we take a look at race number four, George, a question for you. You mentioned you use the thoroughgraphs. What percentage of your handicapping relies on thoroughgraphs? Is it 100%? Is it 50%? Yeah. What other variables do you kind of incorporate into your handicapping when you come to a, you know, when it comes to finalizing your analysis? Yeah. Without question, it's the, the majority uh, of my handicapping is the thoroughgraph numbers. You I mean, live I, and breathe by. I live and breathe. I love them. Uh, I would say 80% of the time. I, you know, the numbers, the numbers, the number uh, that it incorporates. And and I've seen it many times where uh, the thoroughgraph number is much better than the than the uh, than the uh, buyer number. buyer number. Like uh, the buyer, uh, two horses might get the same buyer number, but want to have a much better third ground because he lost ground and and a, a number of other factors. So I love that. I, I, I like to take into uh, account class and also uh, pace. You know, if there's a paceless race, and you get a, a lone speed, sometimes like that. But for the most part. Third graph number is what I swear by. Race number four begins a 20 cent rainbow pick six. The jackpot single ticket carryover now up to $54,000. That amount plus whatever is wagered today will be yours if you're the only winning ticket. And we kick things off here in race number four, sprinting five and a half furlongs on the main track. It's for $20,000 claimers that have, not, that have uh, not won three races in their lifetime. Scratch the one leaves us with a field of five. Number two, Sawad, Sawaz D is the uh, nine to five morning line favorite. Brian Coroner had a win on yesterday's card. Is he going to have a win on today's card he certainly uh two uh can win he's gonna be my second pick he's got good speed comes in with the best last race third graph number and i tell you i i love the third graph numbers so my top pick is the four by far the worst third graph numbers in the race it's not even <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i just said that and then here i'm picking the horse with my i guess that 80 percent went out the window, out the window this one. and and one of the reasons is shut up michael uh you know i've won with this one before and Man, Shadow Michael was facing some really, really tough competition, much tougher uh, than any of these others has faced. The other ones have generally been facing twenty thousand dollar non winners of two, non winners of three, lifetime optional claiming twenty. Shadow Michael's been running tough one other than's, tough seventy five thousand, one of sixty thousand, and trained by Jonathan Wong, who I highly respect, Jonathan Wong. So uh, they, you know. They put the uh, blinkers on, so you know he's trying to shake things up, dropping them in class. I think this is a chance for Shut Up Michael uh, to put up a good performance against this, I think, a little bit less class level. But uh, third graph numbers, this is one race where I'm steering away from them because by far the worst third graph numbers are Shut Up Michael, but he's been facing much, much tougher competition. And shut up, Michael, as you mentioned, trained by uh, trainer Jonathan Wong. Blinkers go on today, I should say, back on. And whenever blinkers go back on for the Wong barn, he wins at a 24% wing clip with a high sample size. Race number five begins the 50 cent late pick five. We're coming down the hillside turf course. Good to see a return to action on the hillside turf course. Also, race five begins the 50 cent late pick five. This is an allowance optional claiming race. Non-winners of two other than scratch the seven. Leaves us with a field of nine. Number five, young again from the red hot George Papa Padroma barn is the lukewarm seven to two Moy line favorite. I I like the late pick five sequence today, George, because I think it's going to pay something. Big fields, a lot of question marks, a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, certainly uh, it's going to pay well. And uh, there was a scratch in that race of seven. So Farelli, who obviously So Farelli, I thought had a chance as, uh, as well. Yang again has got like B plus, B plus, like phenomenal workouts uh, leading into this. And you said it, George Papa Padromo. Man, he's hot. And, you know, there was a time he wasn't that hot. And then all of a sudden, he has caught fire for now quite some time. And he is doing phenomenal. One of the nicest guys to root for as well. I love him. Uh, but I'm going to go with uh, what I, who I call the Sultan of Saad, uh, <laughs> Phil D'Amato. Because he had a horse called, uh, you know, uh, uh, Babe Ruth, right? Or, yes, so, he did. Uh, and, Babe Herman Ruth. Uh, right. And so when, when I saw that, he was the Sultan of SWAT, obviously. I was like... This fits a perfect because this guy, he's like the Babe Ruth on the turf of uh, of the trainers here. So, uh, you know, I affectionately call him the Sultan of Saad and Phil D'Amato, just a phenomenal uh, trainer, uh, just a, a wonderful guy. And uh, he's got standing O in this race. First time Pratt, again, one of the angles I love. Uh, his last two third graph numbers were the best in the field. Uh, both of them, I like horses that win by a neck, that win by a head, that fight, fight, fight. Um, so uh, standing O for George O is going to be my uh, <laughs> top pick, and hopefully I'll be standing and cheering. And uh, fantastic, look fantastic as well, winning the last time out. DeTori uh, is also, I think, uh, could 
set up for a good day. He's got some live mounts through the course of the day, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a fantastic win at all with the cutback and drawn nicely. Down the hill, for whatever reason, I don't know if you agree, the outside uh, post – seem to have a slight advantage. Is that Do you feel that? I do. I do. I think just tactically the jockeys are able to make a little bit better decision rather than having to rush from the inside. But uh, standing up, who's your top choice, George? I'll just uh, say and greet uh, Phil D'Amato, the trainer, with a belated happy birthday, which yesterday was Phil's... Uh, birthday and standing no we haven't seen since june of last year but standing no did win that last race that he performed in in the afternoon there's four next out winners out of that race so certainly uh, that's proven to be a live race race number six begins the 50 cent late pick four six furlongs in the main track for phillies and mares sixteen thousand dollar claimers non-winners of two races lifetime a field of six number four silent beauty is the nine to five moy line favorite from the peter and barton ridden by drayden van dyke give us your thoughts on race six george Certainly uh, looks good. Uh, DVD aboard for Peter Erton. Just missed last time out. A really, you know, a nice, nice performance. I'm going to take a shot on a uh, mare that I bet the last two times and lost both times. So she owes me. Do you ever feel that? <laughs> hey, she owes me money. Uh, Naughty Evelyn. And Evelyn is, uh, yes, she works in the gift shop with my wife, Lily. Uh, is she naughty? Lily's right-hand uh, woman. And so every time I go, yeah, I'm betting on, on you. And she's always been naughty to me because she hasn't won the last two times. But uh, <laughs> she's got some strong back numbers. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, that Rispley somehow will get her to, uh, turned around. Uh, I'm going to take a shot at her at 6-1. to one. She's got speed. She could be right up there and hopefully – uh, you know, my mom didn't raise a quitter, so I'm going to stick with Nord and, and Naughty Evelyn one more time. George, you mentioned the gift shop, and we've been singing the praises of Sanita, but the gift shop is one of the best gift shops anywhere in North America that's located on a racetrack. I mean, they've got a, a wide variety of different gifts and a memorabilia that you can buy. You can also shop online. I mean, you've been to a lot of racetracks. This yeah. is a really cool gift shop. It's a really cool gift shop. It's been, even before uh, my wife took over, it was always a cool gift Lily, when she was running the gift shop at, at uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Park. Park, was... was uh, I wouldn't say jealous, but she was like, man, that gift shop at San Anita is nice. It's like Yankee Stadium, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it really was. And she, uh, and let me tell you, my wife doesn't talk a lot, so you don't hear a lot from her, but I well, see her. Opposites she, attract. Yeah, right. She absolutely gives her heart and soul to that gift shop. She cares so much. And and sometimes since she's not boisterous, you, it may not come across, but uh, when she's sick at home, she's working. She's she's really, uh, she's, she's a wonderful uh, and she loves, loves the gift shop. And, and it shows uh, that she cares. And come to the gift shop. There's some great stuff in there. And it's fun. Gift shop located right inside the uh, grandstand entrance near the paddock. And as I mentioned, you can also shop the San Anita gift shop online. Race number seven is our feature race on the card. It's the grade three San Ana Stakes. $100,000 guaranteed as the purse for Phillies and Mares. Traveling a mile and a quarter on the turf course. Two scratches in the race. Scratch the six and eight. Leaves us with a field of seven. Number three, Australia Mia is the three to one Moyne line favorite. The first three finishers in the Astra Stakes uh, will be performing in the Santa Ana Stakes as well. Specifically, Queen of the Temple, Australia Mia and Duvet Day all participated in the Astra Stakes. In order to get a better handle on today's Santa Ana Stakes, let's show the replay from that race and listen to Frank Miramati describe the action. And they're off in the Astra Stakes. It was a smooth beginning. Lady Clementine has hustled out to take the early lead. Australia Mia comes away a clear-cut second in the early going. And Tiz and Adventure on the outside is third as they move around the trees for the t run in toward the stretch. Down at the rail, Queen of the Temple settles nicely in fourth. Two lengths back to New Heat fifth, six lengths off the pace. Barrister's Ride inches up just outside of her. They're followed by almost a factor. Duve Day is next, and it's a gap of four back to Warren's Candy Girl, who trails. Into the stretch for the first time, and Flavian Pratt and Lady Clementine are uncontested on the front end. They lead it by two over Australia Mia in second. Tis an adventure galloping along in the center of the course third. Queen of the Temple at the rail. Yellow cap just cruising along at this stage. Four lengths off the lead with a lap to go. New Heat is next. Racing on the outside of almost a factor. Barrister's Ride, Duvet Day, and Warren's Candy Girl continues to trail. Lady Clementine has a two-length lead. Bet the six furlong pole. Australia, me and the orange color second. Queen of the Temple continues to save ground at the rail. Tis an adventure is just in front of her. New Heat is fifth, five lengths off the lead. Almost a factor is next. 
A length and a half back to Barrister's Ride, outside Duvet Day, and Warren's Candy Girl. There's a half mile to go in the Astra Stakes, and they're chasing Lady Clementine, who's been there every step of the way. Australia Mia within about a half length now in second. Tis an adventure, Queen of the Temple, new heat and almost a factor. There's been virtually no change in the running order. Barrister's Ride passing a couple of rivals on the outside with the purple cap, Duvet Day and Warren's Candy Girl. There's a quarter of a mile to go, and Queen of the Temple now cut loose on the outside, switches to the three path, and comes to pounce on Lady Clementine. Between them, it's Australia Mia. They're a furlong from the finish, and Queen of the Temple has taken charge. Australia Mia's in second. Duvet Day is finishing very strongly on the outside, and here she comes, and Duvet Day unleashed under Kazushi Kimura to win the Astro Stakes. Queen of the Queen Temple. Of the Temple. George Pocket Kings got the money that day with Duvet Day, but that uh, that distance of that particular race we just watched the replay for was a mile and a half. Today's race is shorter at a mile and a quarter. Queen of the Temple looks to get that good inside pocket trip again. Now it's all conjecture, but if that particular race we just watched the Astra Stakes was a mile and a, qu a mile and a quarter, perhaps Queen of the Temple would have won that particular day as well. And that's has swayed my handicapping in this race for sure. The distance of this race because Queen of the Temple. Uh, look solid man that was a m massive move there and got to the lead it just proved a little bit too long and got run down by duvet day duvet day with a brilliant ride by kimura so uh i think that the uh the mile and a quarter is going to be perfect queen of the temple was entered yesterday uh and and uh you know you know left that race to come to this one i think for whatever reason i feel that's a, a very positive sign you got our leading jockey on the uh, feature race of the day, I think Queen of the Temple is the one they're going to have to beat. Uh, Duvet Day is probably going to come late, probably going to get a piece. Uh, might even uh, uh, round out the exact end. Australia Mia got an A on the workout report, but I wasn't overly impressed with uh, Australia Mia. So uh, I'm going to have that one third. But I like uh, I like Queen of the Temple a lot at this distance. Race number eight begins the $1 Golden Hour Pick 4, linking our last two races here at Sanita with the last two races of Golden Gaining. We kick things off here in race number eight, sprinting six furlongs on the main track for $50,000 claimers. We've got a field of six. Number one, I got no money. That's kind of our theme song, right, George? I got no money. <laughs> two to one on the morning line for trainer Mark Glatt, a, a son of monies. Talk to us about race eight. All right, race eight. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the, you know, again, first time Pratt. Uh, Pratt started the meet, kind of could not chilly buy a win, man. He was seconditis. He had seconditis, but all that seems to be turning around. He's one of the best jockeys in the country, without question. He gets his first chance upon this Saddler uh, trainee who uh, obviously, you know, there's some layoff lines, has had some issues, but has turned in some powerful performances uh, in the uh, in the short nine race career. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, Pratt taking the call of that b brilliant workout on February 17th, which you can see for free uh, on uh, XBTV. So uh, I think good vibes only. And that's what this show is pretty much about, good vibes only. So uh, <laughs> At least today. Yeah, so uh, certainly uh, I think has a big, big chance. Uh, Clamp it. It wasn't that uh, uh, here's Beverly a story Hillbillies? about the man named Chad. Yeah. And so uh, clamp it just on the name alone, I like. But uh, <laughs> but the Tory, another one, uh, another live one. First time to Tory, uh, taking a little bit of a drop in class. Hasn't been seen since May, but Mark Glatt. Uh, is an excellent trainer. Uh, I like those two. Mark Glad has two runners in the field, including the morning line favorite down on the rail. It uh, begs the question, why why run two when one will do? We close out the day and we close out the week in race number nine. You okay over there? Oh, I'm fine, fine. Okay, just checking. I figured I got no money. Choked you up a little bit. Close out the day, close out the week in race number nine. Keep in mind, live racing will resume on Friday and an important uh, note to take note of. 1 p.m. post time going forward here at the Gray Race Place. Of course, with the time change today, we're pushing post time back on a regular basis to 1 p.m. Pacific time starting this coming Friday but we kick uh, we close things out I should say in race number nine with the starter allowance race you'll remember that uh, same condition in race number three we spoke about that was for Phillies and mares this is for the boys in race number nine five furlongs on the turf course also race nine begins the five dollar golden hour daily double there is one program scratch scratch the nine leaves us with a full field of 11 great way to close out the card and number 11 my summer dream is the two to one morning line favorite give us a winner George so this is my best bet of the day. All right, we're all uh, and, ears. And hopefully uh, we'll get the job done. Is it one to nine? It's uh, Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. There's no way it's going to be one to nine here. But this one has looked like a one to nine shot lately. It's number seven, see through it. 
See through has won six races in a row. You got to be a racehorse. I don't care where you're running to win six races in a row. What a claim for twenty five thousand from Milton Pineda. A wonderful claim, uh, right? For twenty five thousand, won a couple of stakes races, uh, and and has won. You know, hasn't won all those races at Los Al. It's won at Los Al. Won at Golden Gate. Won at Del Mar. Won at San Anita. Uh, this one is very versatile, and he's got the best thoroughbred numbers by far. Still, he's five to one. It's one of those, you know, they still no respect. It's like the Ronnie Dangerfield. There's still no respect at all. Uh, five to one in the morning line. Just ran a three on the third graph numbers. A three. That is a stellar number. Uh, faster than anybody else in the race. Uh, so uh, I, I'm going to I'm gonna keep riding uh, his coattails until he loses because he looked phenomenal. He's won six in a row. And I'm going to him. Uh, Chaos Theory. Uh, Hector Berrios, here's another guy who's look. We have a a really good jockey colony, really deep colony. This guy's good, which is Hector good for Berrios. Us as horse players. Yeah, that's great for, that's us. Great for us, you know, because uh, you don't want to lose uh, uh, because you got a bad ride from a jockey who's maybe not as strong. But uh, we got nothing but strong jockeys here, so you know you're going to get a good ride. I love that. Uh, and Hector Berrios has looked phenomenal. This one's won two in a row as well, Chaos Theory. So uh, a pretty contentious last race, but I, 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 I'm gonna, I see through all of it, and I'm going with number seven. <laughs> seven and eight to close it out in race number nine. I mentioned Milton Pineda claim see through it back on October 10th here at the Great Race Place. They often say that it's better to be lucky than good, and there were 13 claims in for see through it that day, and of course the winning shake was uh, submitted by Milton Pineda. George, before we let, uh, before we let you go, we got to talk about one more wager, and I know you've been playing it. That's the good news. The bad news is you haven't hit it yet. That's the Coast to Coast Pick 5, which is a $1 minimum and a low takeout. Uh, you said your parents didn't raise a quitter. They also raised a person that never gives up. And, uh, of course, you can see on today's pick, a Coast to Coast Pick 5 sequence, the uh, first leg of that goes as Gulfstream Park Race 8 at 107 p.m. Pacific time. Not only is it a higher minimum, but it's a lower takeout. Two things that I know you like because you know it results in better payouts. No question. The low takeout is very important. The dollar minimum really uh eliminate some of the riffraff you know what i'm saying so uh it, it usually pays well yesterday was a pick four and i still missed it man <laughs> but i'm not giving up i'm going for it again once again today we know that george our twos are never gives up whether it's handicapping or here working at the racetrack being one of the best ambassadors we can possibly have george thanks so much for your time and insight today always a pleasure to have you on you bring tremendous energy and i know it's certainly sincere and heartfelt all right, TQ, thank you so much. Thanks to all of you for watching as well. Next voice you hear will be track announcer Frank Miramati updating us with any late program changes. Have fun, everybody, today, and good luck at the Great Race Place. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, and the turf is rated as good with the rail on the turf at zero feet. Here are the changes. Blinker notes in the first start of the early pick five. The second race starts the early pick four with a blinker note. No changes in the third. In the fourth, scratch number one, Mitico. Fourth race is the beginning of the rainbow pick six with $54,000 in the carryover. The fifth kicks off the late pick five with a scratch of number seven, Zaffarelli. Race five, scratch number seven. In the sixth race... No changes. Seventh is the grade three Santa Ana. Scratch six, my favorite daughter. Scratch eight, Harper's Gallop. Six and eight out of the seventh. Eight starts the golden hour pick four. There are no program changes. And in the ninth, we have the program scratch at number nine. Finally here, the golden hour double begins with race nine. We'd like to remind you Next Saturday, March 18th, we're going to be presenting a special Santa Anita Jockey Colony signing session. Great opportunity for the first 1,000 fans. You'll get a free Santa Anita Classic Meet Jockey Colony print, and the jockeys are raising money for the PDJF, the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund, but donations are encouraged but not required. Therefore, you can come out for no charge whatsoever, between 11.15 and 12.15 in the East Paddock Gardens and get autographs of your favorite jockeys on this classic meet jockey colony print, which will be given away to the first 1,000 fans. Say hello to our jockeys and get your jockey colony print for free while supplies last next Saturday, March 18th. We do once again have the Coast to Coast Pick 5. It's every Saturday and Sunday, combining races from both Gulfstream Park, and Santa Anita Park. Today's sequence begins in a little more than an hour with Gulfstream's Race 8. It's a $1 minimum wager and a low 15% takeout. 25 minutes to post for the opener. Enjoy your day at Santa Anita Park. 